Hey everyone, and welcome back to What Did I Miss? Where today, I will be covering all the Easter eggs, references, and things that you may have missed in the second episode of the second season of Lower Decks, titled Kayshawn, His Eyes Open. Thanks for clicking on this video, and if you do enjoy it, please help out the channel by hitting that like button and subscribing for future sci-fi content. The episode title is a reference to the new security chief introduced in this episode named Kayshawn. He is a Tamarian, a species from the planet Sigma Tama 4, and first introduced in the Next Generation episode, Dharma. In that episode, Captain Picard was forced to work with a Temerian captain to fight off a beast after being transported to a planet, which was after the Enterprise-D answered a hail from the species. Captain Picard and the bridge crew discovered that the Temerians speak in metaphor, which made initial communication difficult, but eventually the captain was able to communicate what had happened on the planet to the Temerian crew after being rescued by the Enterprise. Kayshawn is replacing Commander Shax, the former Bajoran security chief who died in the final episode of the first season. The episode starts with the crew using the sonic showers, which looks similar to the version first seen in the original motion picture. The idea of Camino showers and living arrangements remind me of other sci-fi crews like the one seen in the movie Starship Troopers and Aliens. Jet, who was first introduced in the third episode of last season, mentioned that he was reassigned to Beta Shift. It was established last season that the USS Cerritos is on a four-shift schedule instead of a three-shift schedule, which the Enterprise-D was known to use. This was a point of consternation between then Commander Riker and Captain Jellico in the Next Generation episode Chain of Command. And after Lower Decks referencing this now twice, I'm surprised that they did not involve Captain Riker in this conversation about scheduling. In case you did not watch my video about the first episode of the season, which I will link here and in the description if you would like to watch it, I mentioned that the introduction for the series was changed slightly for the second season, and that now Packlid ships have been added to the battle with the Borg and Romulan vessels that the Cerritos runs away from. These ships are called Packlid Battle Harpies, and they were created for the species' appearance on Lower Decks. Much of this episode references the Next Generation episode The Most Toys, in which a collector stole then Lieutenant Commander Data because Data was the only known android to exist. When the Cerritos arrives at the ship, Captain Freeman addresses Chairman Ziggy, who is not concerned with the passing of his fellow guild member, only that everyone knows that his collection is greater. This is similar to the rivalry shown in the Next Generation episode that was established between the characters Kivas Fejo and Paylor Toff. We are then introduced to Kayshawn, who uses a Temerian metaphor before correcting himself. He is shown to be wearing a sash and dagger, and in the episode Darmok, we saw the Temerians also wore this and are a very ritualistic people. And this dagger is not just a form of protection, but also served as part of their spiritual belief system. It is interesting that the species is now referred to as Temerians after being referred to as the children of Tama in the Darmok episode. This may be a way for the species to assimilate their dialect into the style used by the Federation, which Kayshawn refers to as the Federation Standard. Kayshawn utters some of the same metaphors used in the Darmok episode, such as when the Lower Decks crew meet him before their mission, he states Darmok and Jalad on the ocean, which the Temerian captain said to Captain Picard repeatedly to try to get him to understand their situation. Jet responds that his verbal mess up is no beast at Tanagra, which is another line from the episode. There's a lot of Easter eggs in the Collector's Museum, and I'm going to try and catch them all, but as always, if I miss any, please let us know what you find in the comments. The first thing that caught my eye is the bottom half of the Cation probe seen in one of my favorite TNG episodes, The Inner Light. I think later in the episode we get a better shot of it. There are a bunch of weapons on the wall, which include a Klingon Batleth and Mechleth, along with a Vulcan Lurpa, shown in the original series episode of Muck Time, and the Andorian weapon, shown in the Enterprise episode United, that saw Commander Tran lose one of his antennae. I also think we see what is supposed to be the Mars Exploration Rover on the museum floor, and we get a good shot of it behind Ziggy when they first arrive. Speaking of Ziggy, he asks if they took so much time because they were debating the human rights of a robot. This may be another reference to the TNG episode The Most Toys, but it could also reference the more well-known human rights episode Measure of a Man, in which Riker and Picard are forced to debate the rights of Data as an individual. I also caught a red Terran flag from the mirror universe on the wall, and now I really want one for my office. In the same scene, we get our second reference to the episode Where No Man Has Gone Before in two weeks, as you can see the Valiant flight recorder on the museum floor. Also, you'll probably notice a bright Caddis Cot board in the collection. It is curious why a child's game that is seemingly mass-produced would be in this collection, so perhaps this is the same board that 7 of 9 and Naomi Wildman used on the Voyager during their travels. There's also a great white shark in the museum, which makes me think that the species may be extinct by this time. Humpback whales were also shown to be distinct for a time, and the crew of the Enterprise, I mean the Bounty, were forced to go back in time and find two in the movie Star Trek The Voyage Home in order to save the planet Earth. While complaining about the amount of items to catalog, Mariner picks up and puts down a device on a mannequin head, known only as The Game, from the Next Generation episode The Game. 
Rutherford puts down an isomagnetic disintegrator, which is a bazooka-like weapon that Worf was seen with in the movie Insurrection. In that same scene, in the background you can see a trombone, and this may actually be Riker's trombone that we saw him play many times on the Enterprise. But right below that, you see a pair of gym shoes that look to me like the pair worn by Marty McFly in the movie Back to the Future 2. When Rutherford puts the disintegrator down, you can see a box of Chateau Picard on the ground as well, and this is the vintage produced by the captain and his family for many years. There's also a salt vampire that was first seen in the original series episode The Man Trap. This is at least the third time this creature has been referenced on Lower Decks, with it being referenced in the first season on Mariner's Conspiracy Board, as well as being one of Ransom's dates. While Ziggy is talking to Rutherford about him being a cyborg, Rutherford states that there are only a few that he knows of in Starfleet. This could be a reference to Lieutenant Detmer, who at this time would be presumed dead, but was in fact transported almost a thousand years into the future with the rest of the crew of the Discovery. Ziggy mentions to Rutherford that he has a top-notch menagerie. Not only is this a reference to the pilot episode of Star Trek, but the fact that he calls his collection a menagerie or zoo is a hint that... This guy... This is not my kind of guy. We then see Tendi holding a couple things, and one is a Trident scanner used by the original series engineering crew, and the other is a Curlon Nace Coast from the TNG episode The Chase. Kayshawn then says Temba his arms open, which is another quote from the Darmok episode, as he and Tendi come upon an object known as the Kalos Fornication Helmet. Kalos the Unforgettable was a legendary spiritual figure that was later cloned in the Next Generation episode Rightful Heir. Right after this, I believe that Jet and Rutherford are carrying a photon torpedo from the original series era, similar to the one seen in the movies right before the security system is set off. When the security system hologram comes online, it says, ah, 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 and waves his finger, just like the security system reacted in the first Jurassic Park movie. The plot of an automated security system coming online and trying to kill the crew has been used at least once before in the Deep Space Nine episode Civil Defense, in which a hologram of Gold Ducat appears and torments the crew. After the flying orbs are released, in the overhead cases you can see a female red uniform from the original series era, along with a Benzite breathing apparatus. The case that almost falls on the Kayshawn doll is housing the necklace worn by Khan in the movie Star Trek The Wrath of Khan. Since he was disintegrated by the Genesis device at the end of that movie, this must be a replica or from another universe. Then we once again catch up with Boimler and the Titan, who is assigned to an undercover mission with the rest of the bridge crew sans Captain Riker. We have seen every crew embark on some type of undercover mission before, with two of my favorites with the TNG crew being the episode Gambit and the movie First Contact. This crew starts to talk about the adventures of the D, which I think is a really cool way to classify the Enterprise D, and I hope that it catches on. They make many callbacks, such as the ship and crew's many run-ins with the Borg, how they insurrected, which is an obvious reference to the movie Insurrection, as well as the ship having many string quartets, which were shown in the TNG episode Inheritance. Back at the Collector's ship, we find the crew in a room full of skeletons at what I think is my favorite Easter egg of the entire episode, which is a giant skeleton of something wearing a blue original series era uniform. This has to be the skeleton of the giant clone of Spock, created in the animated series episode The Infinite Vulcan. If you're going to watch one episode of the original animated series, I would recommend that one, as it also has ties to the Eugenics War storyline. I also think that one of the skeletons looks like one of the flying monkeys from The Wizard of Oz, but in a much larger form. Right before a Mariner hits the security device, she calls it a stupid vacuum, which I laughed at, because when I first saw these devices, I said to myself they look exactly like Roombas, which in fact is what they basically are. There's also a skeleton of Abraham Lincoln on display, which has to be a reference to the original series episode The Savage Curtain, which also featured Kalos. After the away team from the Titan is cornered by the Packlids, Boimler starts to embody the finer points of Starfleet and how their mission is one of exploration and not of conquest, a point that has been made many times before. He talks about how he would love to have seen Riker catch a love disease, which is a reference to the TNG episode The Naked Now. Boimler also talks about wanting to see Riker act in plays, which is a reference to the episode Frame of Mind that saw Riker not able to distinguish between reality and a play he was involved in with Dr. Crusher. He also references Riker's clone Thomas, who was introduced in the TNG episode Second Chances and then appeared later again on the Deep Space Nine episode Defiant. Boimler actually remembers the clone's creation and uses it to get them out of danger, but in turn he creates a clone of himself. But Riker's clone is marooned and not found for eight years before being rescued, which changes his personality considerably. In this case, it seems like the version of Boimler that used a shuttle to return to the Titan is the one that is forced to return to the Cerritos. I thought this was a really clever way to get Boimler back on the ship, and this also leaves the door open for the Titan to return at any time. When Ensign Boimler is leaving the Captain's radio room, Captain Riker tells the computer to play the song Nightbird, which is a song that Riker was trying to learn how to play in the TNG episode Second Chances. 
The episode ends with Keishan saying Shaka when the walls fell, which is another line from the Darmok episode. Well, that was everything I could find in the episode, but let me know in the comments if I missed anything. I probably stopped and started this episode more than any other I've ever done, and I still know that I've missed some stuff. Thank you for clicking on this video though. Please hit that like button if you have not yet, and I will see you next time on What Did I Miss?